Hey guys, welcome to Team Pandora. Roll the intro. This here is my current laptop bag. This is bloody heavy. Taking this on vacation is a chore, and with its combined weight and bulk, I need to think twice about taking it to work. So we got a package from the Amazons. Chicken smash. Yeah, I'm a bit of a monster. In this box from the rainforest, we get lots of paper. Thank you, trees. And what we have inside is a chewy box. I will chew mice melons any day. It's me, John Lou. This is the only side of the box that has any information on. Seems as the choice of Windows or Linux. All of the other sides are for drawing on. When we pull open the flaps, we can pull out polystyrene. Hiding items in your flaps that's hot. The smaller square box in the center is full of paper you'd never use. Perfect for the toilet. Like this guarantee. We're gonna try and open this up, so this guarantee is guaranteed not to work. Guarantee. Also inside is an instruction manual that can open up to crazy size. I have a crazy size. And double-sided for a different language. A laptop is hidden inside this oblong. Bolong! Exceptional care has been put in to the packing. And inside this oblong, Bolong! we have a power adapter. And nothing else. The adapter is rated for a 12 volts, two amps, and 24 watts. The pins can be clicked in or out for transport. And as I'm in Japan, I get the US style adapter. Ooh. This looks very nice indeed. Outside the Chewy logo, this is very clean. Perfect for a facial. On the underside, we have air vents, holes for stereo speakers, and the rubber feet feel quite thick. It's good to see that this will have a sizable gap underneath the laptop to aid in cooling. This is beautiful. There's a large trackpad. The bottom bit clicks in for a left and right mouse button. And the keyboard is similar to a cheap Logitech. It's American region and feels slightly cheap, but I'm not complaining for the price. The edge is reasonably thin, with no I.O. ports on the front. On the right side, we have a micro SD card slot, a small audio jack, and one USB 3 port. On the opposite side, we have power and one USB-C port. On the first boot, it'll jump us straight into the Windows 10 setup, where we need to answer some questions, language, location, and do our best to turn off Skynet. We can also use different software to do so later. On first impressions, this seems pretty snappy. There's a decent amount of memory. We can see the N5100. The telephone number, my mistress. Windows 10 Home Edition is installed at stock, and when we connect it to the internet, it's automatically activated. Base installation takes about 28 gigabytes, and we have plenty of space to add more software. And videos on the Karma Sutra. We can use Ninite to add more software, and for web browsing and shopping, this is brilliant. You can find this laptop on both Amazon and AliExpress. We'll leave you some links in the video description down below. This laptop and display does a great job with YouTube in 4K. And here's the rest of the specs. Main points are the display is IPS, 3-2 ratio, and the CPU has a wide range, so it'll be snappy when it needs to, and will also have very decent battery life. The lack of ports, however, could be an issue for those who need them. To the benchmarks. Here's Crystal Mark Shizuku. This drive is pretty damn fast. It's 3D Mark, over two to three times faster than the J4125. A little throttling was occurring due to the fanless system. Here's the Geekbench score, as well as OpenCL and Vulkan. Last up for the benches is Passmark. As we have a decent Dismark score, Windows 10 will definitely be snappy. Temperatures at light usage hover around 50 degrees Celsius, but when we're stressing the system, it can get pretty hot. As this has no fans and is completely silent, it is targeted for light usage. Speaking of which, this computer and power adapter comes at 1.5 kilograms. We first tested this as a work computer. As my day job is teaching, I spent the last three weeks designing pixel art and thumbnails for some YouTube channel. He has a long stick. It was a pleasure to use, but there are a few things we had to work around. Instead of this trackpad, we used a Logitech mouse. That's taken up the only USB 3 port we have, so we'll need to use a USB hub. This one also has the LAN port, which is very handy, as they won't give me the work Wi-Fi password. 
One more thing we do need is HDMI out. You can get a USB-C to HDMI cable, and this worked fairly well for them presentations. This cable here is about $10. When we tried using the audio jack with these small earbuds, there was a constant hissing. The more expensive, larger headphones did not have this issue. But when we used this USB audio stick, we were given clear sound. This is from AliExpress for $5. Perfect. So with all this gear, I actually had a really good time using this laptop at work. One more thing we do need to mention is that the laptop speakers sound awful. If your computer speakers sound tinny, check out this speaker polarity check on YouTube. If the audio sounds decent when it's out of phase, and all tinny when it's in phase, that means there's a problem with the speaker polarity. We can fix this by using this free software. Just download and install this, then run the configuration editor. Then push this small button here, then go to basic filters, and then copy between channels. We want to drag a line from the green L to the red L. Double click in the center of the arrow, and then type in minus one. Once we're done here, we can recheck on the YouTube video. I really did prefer this laptop over my gaming one. The monitor is fantastic, and we have much more desk space to work with. When it comes to gaming on this laptop, we're mainly limited to the 2D titles. Castle Crashers, which is usually a 16-9 game, almost fills the screen. There's even an option in the settings menu to do so. Kinda looks a bit odd, but it's possible. Streets of Rage 4 is hovering around 60 FPS, and sometimes dips to around 57. If we lower graphical options slightly, we'll get a perfect 60. Moving on to some 3D titles, here's Dota 2. To get it somewhat playable, we need to lower the graphical settings significantly, and even then, 30 to 40 FPS. Same story for CSGO. 720p, low settings, we're getting significant dips. 20 to 30 FPS. A main reason why I got this laptop is due to the unique aspect ratio. It uses 3.2, which is very similar to 4.3. So this should be perfect for playing retro games on. Here's Heretic. I mean, look at the screen. Even with aspect ratio correction, the whole screen is almost filled up. Hit them demons with your hard stick. I do this day. It's crazy to see games like Settlers 2 look so beautiful on a modern laptop. The colors on the IPS display really do pop. Frontier Elite. Look at the size of the thing. Sorry, my pants are down. Or XCOM Apocalypse. The aliens in this game looked like Muppets. Perhaps your Gabba Gabba characters. Even exceptionally old games like King's Quest 2 are given a new lease of life. This display at this price is incredible. We used a DOSBox front end, DBGL, to choose the games quite easily. Sorry buddy, you're not going to be playing that game. Yeah, that one should work. Or that one. Sorry, Chewy. I think we need to move on. Yeah, all right, buddy. We'll play that later. One more thing that would shine on this thing is emulation. Using WinUAE, we can have an emulated Amiga laptop. Of course, things like Deluxe Paint, things like that run fine, as well as some games. We did try running Batocera on this, but even with the amount of options in BIOS, Batocera refused to start. This could be due to the drivers currently not available. We can use Retrobat. This is very much like Emuelic or Batocera, running from Windows. If there's an emulator on Windows, this thing will be able to run it. 
and using the 3 2 aspect ratio, Amiga emulation runs and looks sublime. If we have the aspect ratio set by a core, we can see how much of the screen is actually used. Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, and even N64 is no problem. If we move on to GameCube, we see a lot more slowdown. And here's the test you've been waiting for, F-Zero GX. Moving on to PlayStation Portable, this laptop is perfectly capable. At three times resolution, with all settings on high, and mostly at 60 FPS with a few dips. And then there's God of War. May need to set this back to two times resolution, but I don't think anyone plays this game, so we can safely ignore. Here's Daytona USA on Model 2. Hello again. I'm back. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I was playing with my two model friends who have the finest backsides. And here's some Model 3. To get this one playable, we need to check the older graphical option, and it'll speed it up nicely. This laptop will run Dreamcast, a Thomas Wave, Naomi, and some of the more difficult titles on MAME, such as Tekken 3, Tekken Tag, Killer Instinct, and also some of the cave shooters. After taking out the two small screws at the back, we have access to an M2 2280 drive bay. We tried an NVMe stick, but this simply did not work, and instead we need to use an M2 SATA 3 stick. This one costed about 30 bucks, and it works fine. We tried to open this, but it's very clear that Chewy do not want this opening up. It's time for the pros and the cons. This laptop has an extremely decent display. The aspect ratio is ideal for retro gaming, as well as added real estate in Windows. It's responsive, silent, light, and very affordable. But the cons, connectivity. The workarounds we need to do to get HDMI, Ethernet, and more USB ports to be awkward for some users. The keyboard is a fingerprint magnet, and the audio from this device definitely needs more quality control by Chewy. The Chewy Jimmy Book is the first laptop I've bought that I've genuinely been impressed with. If you're looking for a laptop for work, family use, or for retro gaming, this one is a winner. Finally, we just want to say a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We create reviews, guides, and also some software that fixes the Pandora boxes. I also help out with the ladies. You do? They can't keep their hands off. Damn right. Actually, what? I opened up my own massage parlor <laughs> last week. <laughs> Why do you have to mention that in this video? If you can't advertise yourself, what hope do you have of advertising anything else? Oh, touche. This has been Emu Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. Buddha bye bye Buddha Buddha bye bye baby come back.